Hello knowledge seekers and YouTube crawlers. In this video, I am going to explore the facts and arguments of time dilation, as theorized by Einstein in the beginning of the 20th century. For many people, time dilation is the most difficult part to understand about Einstein's theory of relativity. The idea that time is a malleable construct that passes at a changing rate is certainly not intuitive. It may even seem ridiculous to some. But is it true? And how can we know? When Einstein first published his special theory of relativity in 1905, he was met with criticism. This was a period of time when physicists thought they were nearing the end of their collective careers. They thought everything about classical physics was on the verge of being fully explained. There was just one big question left unanswered. Why is the speed of light constant from all reference frames? In other words, when you shine a light on a moving train, why is the speed the same as when you shine the light standing still? Einstein's answer to this question was simple yet radical. If the speed of light doesn't change, perhaps space and time do. His answer turned the entire field of physics on its head and created new fields entirely. He showed that the classical way of looking at the universe was unable to explain every physical interaction. This led us out of the age of classical physics into the age of relativity and quantum physics. But the world didn't follow without opposition to this radical new theory. In fact, there was no real-world evidence for relativity when Einstein's paper was published. It wasn't much more than an elegant and convenient theory devised from thought experiments. It had potential to explain the big mysteries of the time, but created many more. Also, it was complicated and unintuitive. It requires complex math to fully grasp the theory, which led to criticism by those who relied only on common sense and analogy to understand physics. So it makes sense why many people doubted Einstein's bold predictions, especially time dilation. Is time really passing at different rates, or do people only perceive a difference in the passage of time? Some argue that relativity does not imply that time could, for example, cause two twins to become decades apart in age. But that is exactly what it means. In fact, Einstein thought about this scenario in a thought experiment between two twins, one on Earth and one traveling in a rocket, and concluded that the twin on Earth would indeed age faster, causing a noticeable difference in age when they meet back on Earth. Relativity is talking about the true passage of time, where clocks actually begin to tick at different rates because the flow of time itself is varying. Time can slow down or speed up in two scenarios. One, the faster you travel, the more time is distorted. And two, the closer you are to a massive object, the more time is distorted. The first scenario, dealing with speed, comes from special relativity, and the second scenario, dealing with gravity, comes from general relativity. We can find exactly how much time is distorted by using the time dilation equation. The equation is simple for the first scenario, which involves special relativity only. t is equal to t prime times the Lorentz factor, where t is the amount of time experienced by the reference frame at rest, and t prime is the amount of time experienced by the moving reference frame. All you need to input is the velocity between the two, and you can figure out how much time both reference frames experience. One reason why relativity was so popular was because it makes precise mathematical predictions and is possible to test in countless different ways. Einstein even suggested several experiments to test his theory. Although the scientific community was convinced by around 1911, the first true test had to wait until 1919, when weather conditions allowed astronomers to measure the path of light from stars passing near the sun. This experiment was only possible during a solar eclipse, when the overwhelming light produced by the sun was blocked by the moon so that the dim stars around the sun were measurable. When this simple experiment was conducted, the stars turned out to be in the exact place that Einstein predicted. This instantly made Einstein a star. Although it did not specifically prove time dilation, it was enough to show the world that his theory was on the right track. 
It was not until 1938 that the first test directly confirming time dilation was performed. This was called the Ibis Stillwell experiment. It took advantage of the fact that light changes frequency with motion. Just like sound changes frequency when its source is moving, like the sound of a siren when an ambulance drives by, light changes frequency as well. We perceive this as a change in color. This is called the red shift of light when the source is moving away, and blue shift when moving towards the point of measurement. The Ivis Stillwell experiment measured the frequency of light in motion, and the results matched up perfectly with Einstein's predictions. A couple years later, another experiment was devised to measure time dilation on moving particles. Particles decay at a rate predicted by their half-life. So if Einstein was correct and time moves slower from their perspective in motion, we would expect them to take longer to decay compared to when they are at rest. Indeed, when measuring fast-moving muon particles entering the atmosphere from space, we detect many more particles than classically expected, but the exact amount predicted by relativity. This indicates that fast-moving particles experience time much slower than when stationary, providing more evidence for time dilation. Today, relativity is known as the most rigorously tested theory in history. It has stood the ultimate test, the test of time. For over a century, physicists have tried countless methods to disprove relativity. All of these experiments have shown relativity to be shockingly accurate. Physicists confirm time dilation on a daily basis in particle accelerators. Also, GPS satellites have to take time dilation into consideration for them to even work correctly. Depending on their exact altitude, their onboard clocks must be corrected by about 38 microseconds per day to prevent a triangulation error. It is fortunate that time dilation was anticipated before the first GPS satellite was launched. In fact, modern atomic clocks are accurate enough to measure time dilation experience in everyday life, like when driving a car or even running. With some thought, time dilation can be logically deduced from two simple principles. That all reference frames are equal, in other words, there is no preferred or absolute reference frame, and the speed of light is always constant from every reference frame. This is how Einstein convinced himself and the scientific community. To illustrate, imagine we are on Earth watching a rocket fly by. We want to figure out the difference in the flow of time between the rocket's moving reference frame and our stationary reference frame. From our earthly perspective, the rocket moves a distance equal to its velocity times time, since the definition of velocity is distance over time. Then, say the rocket turns on a light perpendicular to its path of motion. From the rocket's perspective, the light travels in a straight line at velocity c, but since the rocket is in a different reference frame from us, they experience the flow of time differently. We will call this t prime to signify the amount of time experienced by the rocket's reference frame. Now from our stationary perspective, the light moves at an angle, since the rocket is moving relative to Earth. We know from experimentation that the velocity of light can never exceed c, therefore the light will still be moving at c, even though it may seem like the moving rocket should boost the light's speed, as it would for anything traveling slower than c. Notice we have a right triangle with an equation for the length of each side. These distances can be related using the Pythagorean theorem. a squared plus b squared equals c squared. After some algebra, we find out that the relation between t and t prime depends on just one variable, velocity. In the modern world, various techniques are available to prove relativity yourself. Sadly, there are people today who still deny it even with all the information available to them. Hopefully this video can spur some of them to look into it themselves and confirm what countless others already know. If you are interested in going to space, you would probably enjoy my tutorial on achieving orbit. Seriously, I will show you how to get to space on a budget. You can check out that video here. Thanks for watching, and have yourself a mindful day.